Good afternoon, everyone. Let's start our session for today. And I promised that there won't be any slides, but I actually, I lied to you. Today, I will show you three slides. Uh, please don't be mad on me. Um, it's actually three pictures, I would say. Mm, can anyone tell me what 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 it is on on this picture on this slide? What what is that? Boris? Is that a form for concrete into? Uh, no, it's uh, it's a ship. Oh, it's a ship. Sorry. I yeah, guess. and you and I don't know if you can see it from here. It says USS South Dakota, New York Ship Building Corp. It's a ship. It's a ship under construction. Under construction. Uh, hope you see it now. Mm, can anyone tell me uh, what are these walls? Why? We have these walls. Why should we waste valuable resources, metal, into building walls inside the ship? Which is love. Uh, sorry, uh, those are for uh, containers, like. Uh, okay. Uh, Probably kind of we're kind of there. Uh, any any other assumptions, Piyush? So that uh, things won't uh, mix with each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, what things? Um, it could be anything which is not uh, related to each other. So it's like if it is a food container, food section, then there is a food, then there would be some other things. Mm -hmm. So it won't mix. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, if it were a, a, a Titanic, right? How could these walls have helped him? Boris? Uh, like a ballast system? Uh, yes. Uh, and let me let me uncover the, this more. So one more picture. Uh, each ship contains uh, is constructed out of the, I would say, waterproofed compartments. You can call it containers, yeah, which are isolated from each other uh, using waterproof walls. They are also called bulkheads. Why they are needed? If, for example, we have uh, a leak, only one of these isolated compartment will be uh will be affected only one compartment at the time will be flooded so in order to destroy this ship it should have at least three leak at least like maybe even four leaks one two three four and probably five but it's like above the water line so these walls the main purpose of these walls they are called bulkheads is to isolate is to create isolated part of ships. So in case one part of a ship is flooded with water, it it doesn't go, uh, is, it doesn't sink immediately. And why I'm showing this to you? We can get back to our Terraform code and see that we have uh, instance, we have VPC, we have user data, quite a lot of stuff already. And what will happen if we want to, for example, update an instance and accidentally change something in our VPC and, for example, mess up our routing? This means entire infrastructure might go down. This means entire ship will sink at a time. So um, today, what we're going to do is basically split our Terraform state Similar way we have this folder as a remote state, we'll have ma several more folders, several additional isolated compartments that will allow us to reduce the probability of messing up the entire infrastructure at once, which will reduce our blast radius. And we will start 
and I will call I will call these uh, compartments levels. Level one, level two. And actually, I will remove, rename this remote state as well into, uh, let's say, level zero. And this should be a folder, not a file. So in level one, in, in level zero, we already have our S3 bucket and Dynamo table, as well as Terraform state. In level zero, well, in level one, it will reuse, uh, provide the configuration that was created through level zero and create a VPC. And level two will take VPC created by uh, level one and deploy an instance in this VPC. Why it also might be mm, useful, right? Because uh, perhaps we might have let's say multiple teams. Let's say we have a network team and let's say we have a uh, da database. And let's say we have, I don't know, DevOps team. So network team might be responsible for VPC. Database admins might be responsible for your RDS instances. We'll cover them later. And DevOps team, let's assume they are responsible for provisioning EC2s, right? And the question is, how do we share all this code between different teams? How do they like interact with each other and don't step on each other's toes? So we'll, we, could, we could take similar approach. We could split our application into multiple uh, layers. And separate team might be responsible for different parts of your infrastructure. Uh, that was theory. Now I will jump into reconfiguring our repository structure. Uh, and before I start doing this, uh, do, do you guys have any questions, maybe anything to further clarify? Do you get the, the idea itself? Yes, Piyush. Yeah, if you can uh, quickly explain again about that folder. These folders are the one which we discussed yesterday about the remote state quickly. Uh, sorry, uh, you need to formulate this question again. And please take time and to, create a, to, cre to write a message for that, right? For, for now, it seems to me that the question is explain to me again. And obviously, like, what's the point of me doing this lecture when at the end of the day, I'm asked to explain this from scratch again? So could you please tell me what exactly you don't understand about the folders? And I will for sure explain this to you, or Geoffrey will explain to you. Yeah, sure. OK, very good. Uh, and thank you for confirming in the chat. Uh, and let's uh, and, and the good good question actually uh, from Abina: uh, Do they have to store on the same remote state? And the answer is no. Uh, we'll have we'll we'll be changing this um, this key, so they will share the same bucket, but state files will be different. And in fact, we can call it different. Terraform states, and that's the correct term. We'll split our infrastructure into multiple Terraform states and put it in different folders called level zero, level two. And I will start with uh, an, our uh, obviously level one, which is network. Let me close all this. And yeah, step zero, create a branch.
and I will simply start moving the required files into, uh, into the required folder. As I have mentioned, these should be different state files. So this one will be level one dot tf state. Um, VPC will need this. Let's rename this into simply main dot tf variables. We will need this uh, tfrs. We will need this. Okay. Very good. We don't need instance. We don't need a readme file. Uh, let's actually move it even outside of our folder. Oh. How do I do this? Among this code. That. Let's try it this way. Ah, no. Uh, readme all readme is all is already where where it's supposed to be so same same situation i do cd level one and run terraform apply terraform init and terraform apply Twenty-four resources to add, only ones related to VPC. We don't have yet our instance because it's like over there. And yeah, uh, Sanji, if your questions uh, regarding is it best practice? Mm. This scenario happens in real world, but let me tell you this regarding best practice. Um, Terraform is Terraform community. And, Terra and HashiCorp are very flexible on how Terraform is used. And the question is, is the best industry practice everyone follows in real world scenario? It is what I'm showing is the best practice. And when you work, when you see more real projects as you progress in the industry, you'll see various different setups of Terraform. And that's only one of setups that exist. And it's not very often, uh, in, especially in Terraform, like to say that this is best practice and this is not best practice. Yes, there are some general rules, but overall, the idea is there will be multiple ways of preparing Terraform. There will be multiple ways of doing, of organizing your code. And this is what I'm demonstrating is one of these ways. And second question, will it make sense to name folders like network instead of level zero? Might be, it's all up to you. Uh, if you want, you can call them network. If you don't want, you can call it whatever you like. Again, it's not prescriptive. There is no fixed best practice here as I described previously. Thank <laughs> you. 
one more question in the meantime uh, will this approach help to mitigate any issues when the terraform version gets upgraded to higher version if we want to migrate to higher version piece by piece at a time yes this will slightly help uh, you this will allow you to refactor and upgrade your terraform in, in versions in smaller chunks you you you'll have to um, rewrite less code in a single approach in a single attempt and yeah of course if in case something goes wrong during this update as i described previously it will affect only smaller subset of, of infrastructure so yes totally it will uh, it will help but yeah uh ver terraform version upgrade is overall like uh, complicated process that should be properly planned and uh, that's not just like we start using folders and everything is okay it's a more significant effort required over there we have created our vpc and now we can repeat the same with our uh, instance so i'll have instance.tf uh, user data.tf terraform tf state and terraform tf state backup we don't need these files at all as well as terraform.log.hcl and also i'll create a copy of provider tf but remember to change these path otherwise you'll simply overwrite the same state file with different resources and this one will be level two we had everything saved and let's run terraform apply again forgetting to run terraform we need sorry for that yes the key for each state for each level should be unique each folder should contain its own key it's a basically it basically it's a path to the state file for our bucket and now we're splitting our infrastructure into two multiple state files and uh, let's uh, let's use verbal communication if if possible guys uh, be because um, I, then i have to repeat the question uh, out loud in the chat you can always raise the hand and i will i will i'll be i'll be happy to to have a discussion so let's let's try using using chat for questions less and prefer talking out loud okay so we have an error can anyone tell me what it is do we have a volunteer Sanjeev. Yeah, you, you referenced uh, uh, another resource, which is now in not in not in the same level. It moved to a different uh, level. So yes. you need to uh, exactly. Fix that. Very good. So here's the thing: we still have these uh, these variables, but they no longer available here. They live in a different folder which means as, as we discussed earlier and right now it's time to demonstrate this in action terraform limits scope of variables and resources and like limits the state by by the folder uh, where it's running we need some we need to invent some way of communicating these variables outside of level one into level two 
And there is a feature. There is a feature of Terraform called a remote state data source. So you remember what is data source. A data source is a query to a provider or to something else outside of Terraform uh, that allows us to out obtain some external information. This means we can use Terraform and simply ask it, hey, Terraform, there is a separate state located in uh, the same bucket in this file. Could you please tell me what is the VPC ID or what is the subnet ID or whatever other resource that was declared of in this state? And please write it for me as a variable so I can use it in downstream configuration. And that's exactly what we're going to configure. Uh, for this purpose, as I mentioned, we'll create a data source. Let me put it into a separate file. And it will be data, Terraform, remote state, and I will call it level one. We'll say that it should look for a backend in S3. And we should explain in which S3 bucket should we should we look for this state. Similar to how we define provider configuration, we tell it we have we had a different state in a separate folder. The file was written there, read, read from it. And there is a raised hand. Yes, Boris. Uh -huh. Sorry, you, you named it uh, level one, and it's inside of level two folder, I believe. Yes, I it's, it's, it is correct. So what this data source represents? It represents level one. Yes, where we are, it's, it, it, the data source itself is declared in level two, but it returns data from level one. That's why I called it level one. And I got it. Point you're, you're pulling, level one. Yes. You're pulling from level one. Got it. Got that, it. That's right. Yes. And I call it, it it's better to call it, uh, it, it's better to s demonstrate in the naming what we are calling instead where we are, because we might have multiple remote states of this kind. Sanjeev? Yeah, so earlier you created the, you're cross-referencing uh, the attribute from one resource to another resource by the ID or something like that, right? There you had, uh, basically you're mapping re between resource uh, blocks. Here, your, uh, your, your requirement becomes that you have to have the resource already pre-created in the, in the, uh, level in, the state, one. In, the st in the state file, in the yes. level one, right? Yes, that's right. and. Now we will apply using several Terraform commands. Obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll first apply level one, create VPC and everything, and after that, apply level two. And obviously, it is not possible to create EC2 instance in a VPC if we don't yet have this VPC, right? Right, right, okay. Yeah, but that's, so, the, po that's the point, actually. So when we need changes only in our instance, we we'll don't have to run Terraform plan, for example, and uh, re, uh, re, and reconcile uh, entire stack down to like very very foundational part. We are, so, we are we are adding modu modularity. You wanted to ask something else? Yeah. So um, 
so there is a depends on also right that's that's actually explicit dependency here just uh, whoever is writing the code is creating a requirement so that's just a logic that we are building pretty yes. much correct yes okay. but depends on is slightly different it will not help here okay thanks uh, Radhmi. Okay, and how do we how do we use this uh, information? So first thing first, we need to define uh, what we want to expose through Terraform outputs. So we'll have outputs.tf, and what what we need? Let's let's check. Let me put this one side. So we have uh, subnet. Okay, we can do this output. Public sub submit ID. And we put a value of it like this. Value equals AWS subnet. And here's a trick. We can Take, we can create a list of all subnets and take its IDs. So what essentially it will create since we have count and we specified asterisk means everything is list or similar to that. Subnet one, two, three, subnet ECD and so on. And you'll see this when I run Terraform apply. Perhaps we might need private subnet ID as well. We'll need a VPC ID. And probably that's it. Let's get back to level one and run Terraform apply. And here we are, we have changes to outputs and just like I described, a list of all private subnets, list of all public subnets and VPC ID, which is a string. And what we can do is we can read from this data source from our level one, from our level two, sorry. how it's gonna be it will be uh data terraform remote state level one outputs public subnet id and we'll put it in the first element of this list same thing with our no, actually it's a private instance so we need to have it to call it private private subnet id and over here we'll have public subnet id And also somewhere over here, yes, we'll need VPC ID. Uh, 
and uh, in our second security group as well. Let's try, let me make sure that everything is right, especially provider config, yes, it's level two. Therefore, we need just one more time to make sure everything is fine. And we forgot to declare our environment code. Uh, actually, let me show you one more thing. I, I personally don't prefer doing this that way. But you can, for example, set default values for your variables. In this case, it will not ask you to provide this variable. It will not uh, look for it in Terraform TFRs. It will just take, if the, if the variable is not specified, it will just take it from the default value. That's, that's how you can also uh, have it. Uh, how, this is how you can uh use uh, these functionality of variables and if you see something uh, like this on your real job on your on your nine to five uh, on, on on any of your projects so you you you'll you understand what it means default value that will be substituted automatically let's run terraform apply And yeah, we also need one more output, which is VPC CIDR. We have defined it through our VPC. I'm curious what might have gone wrong. One, just a second. Data, Terraform remote state, level one, outputs, EPC ID, yeah, it was fine. Data, Terraform remote state, level one, outputs, EPC CID, yeah, something is weird. Object doesn't have attribute named VPC CIDR. GDR. It has. Come on. Why it is? Let's 
try one more time. Yes, Boris. It's uh, it's not because it's in it's a it's a list, right? You have it as a list. That it should be right. It's a string. No, I mean in the ingress, or uh, I'm not sure. Let me do just this for one second. One to uh, zero to zero to zero slash. Let's say eight. Let's. I, I'll just localize this. If you data terraform remotes. Ah, okay. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I understand the error. For some reason, it was probably my mistake, and sorry for that. Uh, I didn't notice that. Instead of copying, I moved the file provided TF outside, outside of this directory, and it by default created everything locally. Let me save that. And run Terraform init and apply in level one again. Okay, now we no longer see anything in Terraform DF state. We don't need these files. Let's run one more time Terraform plan to make sure we are still on track. And run Terraform apply here. Now it is good, it is not giving us any error, which means we can go ahead and replace this with our CI, VPC CIDR variable. VPC CIDR. It's safe. Run Terraform apply. Let's emit everything. and push it. 
and create a pull request. And here is the thing. In this setup, when you accidentally run, but hopefully you'll never do this, but just in case, if you accidentally run Terraform Destroy on your production in some of your layers, never do this, right? It will it will destroy immediately and don't even ask you uh, this minus minus auto approve flag. If you accidentally do this in your production, yeah, in case you have this setup, it will at least don't attempt to delete everything. It will delete only fraction. It will limit your blast radius. You will flat only one com compartment of your ship and higher chances of survival and not getting fired due to this mistake. That's That's the point. That is the purpose. Uh, does it make sense? Do you uh, uh, do you have guys any questions? Yes, Sabina. Yeah, that makes sense. So, is output the only resource we can use to import variables to import re um, whatever we need into a resource? I mean, if you don't output it, can you still use it? Because I see that for everything, every um, resource we reference, we use the output variable to expose it. So are there other ways, or is it compulsory for us to use output before we can really remove yeah. states? We need, we need to explicitly define this is an output uh, in our downstream state over here. Here are our values. We all they all have corresponding output, and we can yes, we are reading this output in our, in our using our data source. Okay, so that that that's kind of streamlined my question. So for any whatever you don't output, you can read it from another another state. That's what it means. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you. 